Apple has decided to take on the United States government, and it is an interesting case. Now, we have the San Bernardino shooter, remember the terrorist who killed 14 people, injured 21 others. Well, they have a cell phone, but it, it's they can't open it up. Uh, and so uh, they're asking Apple for help. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, has said no. So very interesting case. First, let's hear out Tim Cook as to why, and then I'll give you both sides. Um, he says, in the wrong hands, this software, which does not exist today, would have the potential to unlock any iPhone in someone's physical possession. So he's saying, look, the FBI uh, isn't saying, here, just unlock this phone for me. And the FBI insists that they are. But Apple's saying, no, they want us to create software to unlock the phone. But once we create that software, well, then anybody can get it. So he continues by saying, the FBI may use different words to describe this tool, but make no mistake, building a version of iOS that bypasses security in this way would undeniably create a backdoor. They are worried that that's a backdoor that the government can then use to open up all our phones. Uh, he continues, and while the government may argue that its use would be limited to this case, there is no way to guarantee such control. He uh, goes on to say the government is asking Apple to hack our own users and undermine decades of security advancements that protect our customers, including tens of millions of American citizens from sophisticated hackers and cyber criminals. The same engineers who built strong encryption into the iPhone to protect our users would, ironically, be ordered to weaken those protections and make our users less safe. So who's right about this? Well, I'm going to get into uh, advocates uh, for privacy that, that begin to tell you uh, who is. But also remember, uh, one of them made a very good point. He said, look, they say that they're painting this issue, the government is, as privacy versus security. But actually, doing this would lay, make all of us less secure for the reasons that Tim Cook just stated, uh, which is that, hey, now if we create this, other people could get their hands on it, and the government could also have it, in which case, then none of our phones are safe, none of our information is safe, and not only is that a violation of privacy, but it could create other security issues. Now, the White House says otherwise. They say, look, um, and in fact, let me quote here, Press Secretary Josh Ernest, according to the Huffington Post, said the Justice Department is, quote, simply asking for something that would have an impact on this one device. But uh, they explained, but privacy advocates called the FBI's request a patently illegal demand that could give them free reign over the public's data. Uh, Tim Cook again said it would undermine decades of security advancements that protect our customers and prove catastrophic in the wrong hands. So um, where do some of the other tech giants come out on it? Well, Google CEO is weighed in. Which side is he going to be on? Well, uh, he says uh, that he is publicly backing Cook, writing on Twitter that the FBI's demand could compromise users' privacy, adding that it could, quote, set a troubling precedent. And they explain here, uh, that Apple has compiled, or I'm sorry, complied with the government request before the Daily Beast notes that the tech giant has aided authorities at least 70 times since 2008, but the company increased encryption safeguards beginning with its iOS 8 and later versions saying at the time it wouldn't be able to comply with requests to pull data any longer. Now we go to Fight for the Future and Campaign Director Evan Greer, uh, and he adjudicates, at least uh, for people who care about privacy, and our constitutional rights here, he says they're not just asking Apple to unlock one phone, they're asking them to build software to circumvent their own security. So he goes on to say, you destroy one of the most important security features of the iPhone. Once it's built, it doesn't just go away. So it, it, this is not an easy issue because look, this guy was a terrorist. Um, now, he's dead already, and that's why it's particularly a unique case because normally the government could just have a warrant uh, for that person to unlock his own phone if he was still alive. Um, but you can't do that since this guy's already passed away and he only knows the code to the phone. So um, I, I, I'm worried that there's a host of crimes which we'd all be outraged by, uh, let alone the terrorism, right? All those things, if it was somebody you know that got killed or that might be in danger now from a guy who doesn't want to give up his code, uh, you might want to say, hey, let's get into that phone. So it's it's not an open and shut case. It's not uh, super easy in one direction or another. But at the end of the day, it, it appears that they have worked with the government in other cases uh, and, and in, in places that made sense, and especially 
uh, if the person is alive, there's a lot of other ways to get the information from the phone. In this case, he already did what he did, he's already dead. Yes, there could be useful information on there about how he might have uh, communicated with other collaborators, but right now there's no evidence of other collaborators. So it's kind of a goose chase. And meanwhile, if it allows the government to have a back door so that it has all of our uh, access to all of our phones, uh, I'm, I'm with the privacy advocates and the people trying to protect the Constitution, that that's too much for the government to ask. And, uh, and I think Apple is right here and Tim Cook is right. Uh, leave our phones alone.